Good morning. Do you hear that sound? The lapping, lapping water up against St. George Marina. Okay. As you can tell, we are here and not there. But next year, when I'm on vacation, somebody else can decide what you're going to do. Because it won't be me. I will be on vacation playing golf somewhere. What did you do with the picture? I really like that picture that was up there. It's like, <laughs> anyway, we're glad you're here. We're glad you discovered that we are not at St. George Marina and are, in fact, here. You will, at a couple of points throughout the worship service, need to imagine that you are sitting beside the water, as water will figure prominently in some of the hymnody and sermon illustrations. Now, for those of you who are visiting, who is lucky enough to have come here three or four times in the same morning trying to track us down? We're glad you are that persistent. Ah! Wait, wait, don't tell me. Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> From Lakeland, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Ken and Cindy. <laughs> Very glad. We're glad you're here. Oh, no. Boy, that got the sound booth real excited. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, my son, Chad, and his wife, Kat, and uh, Sierra and Savannah, you know, are staying with us until they get ready to head off to Trinidad. Uh, but in the meantime, my daughter, Andrea, and her husband, Jeff, and their uh, daughter, Dorothy, and their son, Guster, are with us today, too. And pretty soon we're going to have Jamie and Cat or Ivory roll in with their two. So uh, wow, you're going to need two pews. Well, uh, yes, we will have to expand. So thank you. Oh well, let's make sure everybody. <laughs> that was actually that was actually pretty good. A Schwaber row. I, that 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 was that was very good. See, I, once we get you out of the choir, boy, you're just good to, yeah, you have hidden talents. Anybody else visiting? No? Okay. I have been asked to remind you, uh, we have town hall meetings concerning the proposal to change uh, constitution and revise uh, the way council is structured there will be one meeting before the 5 o'clock service Saturday. We will meet at 4, and then there will be a second meeting for usins after church uh, next Sunday. Here, not at the marina, but here. Uh, so even if it's raining, we'll still meet. Uh, I'm gonna, my class uh, starts tomorrow. Uh, yeah, today is Sunday. starts tomorrow, Monday. Uh, it, we're calling it adult catechism. Don't let that scare you. It's not like when you were a kid and you had to go to cat. Nobody's going to yell at you. Yeah, that's right. It's not that bad. Uh, the idea is that uh, the small catechism is something that is integral to our faith life, and it's handy if we at least get together and look at it, review it, talk about it. I envision this being a lot more of a discussion-oriented class. So we will get started tomorrow at 1130, bring a sack lunch, and we will chat about the small catechism. Other announcements for the sake of good order, things of which we need to be made aware. Now, if Fortes is ready to feed us, somebody in the back, just raise your hand and wave, and we'll, we'll bring her right into the benediction if we're starting to run long. So. All right, if there are no other announcements, please stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. We confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy.
Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cold cup of water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord,
You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, 
on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall command peace at the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and, the, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your all your work shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. He shall tell the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. According to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. 
At this time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. Every so often, my loving spouse will tell me it's time for a happy sermon. (laughs) She gets tired of me being cranky and curmudgeonly. She is a wise woman. So welcome to the happy sermon. Just don't get used to it. Matthew is not totally happy. He does have Jesus taking shots at both the people who found fault with John the Baptist and people who found fault with him. John was very severe, and everybody said, Woo, he has a demon. We don't like him. Jesus, I'm sorry to tell you, was a little more liberal, and they didn't like that either. Well, he's a glutton and a drunkard. And it's in this background that we find the world's most famous funeral text. Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, coming from one who understands what it is to have people yipping and nipping after his heels, right? They were not happy. They didn't like John the Baptist, don't like Jesus. They're just not happy. But Jesus puts forward, even in the midst of that, Rest is available. People missing the point, nitpicking one thing or another. We call them first world problems. You know that coffee was just a little bit too cool. It wasn't quite warm enough. That's a first person, that's a first world problem, right? When your coffee isn't the correct temperature, there are people the world over who would dearly love to have cold coffee. People being cynical, people being hypercritical is not a sign of people being enlightened. It's just annoying. It appe- well, it is. It appears that in the economy of God, it is the infant, the child, the little one, translated the helpless, the powerless, the dependent. These are the ones to whom God chooses to reveal True wisdom. The smarty pants, wise guy, know-it-alls, not so much about wisdom. They just suck the joy out of life. These people are loud and to be avoided. These people are childish as opposed to being childlike, primarily because they have lost the ability to find wonder and mystery and joy in this thing we call life. Now there are without question aches and pains and problems associated with growing older. How's that for a stunning and insightful bit of knowledge? I moved rocks yesterday morning so I can tell you this getting older stuff is tough. But by far the most serious of the problems is losing that sense of hopeful, joyful wonder which children seem to have in abundance. When we succumb to cynicism, we slide down the 
slip, slippery slope in a well-greased hand basket heading directly for perdition. Notice how delicately we dance around the language. Talk to me afterwards and I'll give you the original quote. Who remembers, who remembers Art Linkletter? See, this is one of the... Re yeah, look at those hands. Woo, Art Linkletter. Kids say the darndest things. Well, here is an updated version of art. Because every so often, you just need to take a break. These people all submitted these answers, so it's a whole lot of first person, so don't get excited. I haven't got a whole bunch of different kids. When I asked my five-year-old son how his day was, he replied, Awesome! I inquired what made it so awesome. His response was, because I wanted it to be. <laughs> uh, my three-year-old was making way too much of a mess taking a bath. So I said, hey, settle down. You can't be this wild. We got cleaning to do here. Don't be going crazy. And then with all the dignity that a three-year-old can muster, he stood up in the bathtub, buck naked, raised his arms, and he said, but I gotta have fun. <laughs> oh, we were having trouble getting our youngest child to sleep through the night, and my seven-year-old announced that he knew what was wrong with the baby. Well, this should be interesting. What perchance is wrong with the baby? His answer was, she's nocturnal. <laughs> oh, my three-year-old said about her big sister, who was not being nice to her, it's okay if she isn't nice to me because I can show her how. Yeah, see, that's one way to read it. At our house, that would not necessarily be an aww. That might mean somebody was fixing to get walloped. But <laughs> My five-year-old daughter said, I like the wind. And I said, why? And she said, the wind makes everything dance. Yeah, that is an aww. Okay. And my personal favorite... My daughter and I were walking along the beach for the first time. She looked up at heaven and said simply, I love being in this world. That is the sense of joy and wonder that somehow we lose as adults. So here, here's where you have to envision the gently lapping water. As we gather in the midst of all this water, a Lutheran's thoughts turn to baptism. There you go. It doesn't take much for a Lutheran's thoughts to turn to baptism, by the way. Especially infant baptism because the infant does nothing, brings nothing, asks nothing. And yet that infant receives everything because of God's action. Gift and grace because that is how God chooses to operate. That child will spend the rest of her life growing in that grace. Learning to say thank you as she explores the world around her. Carried to the font or the creek or the lake or the seashore. Wherever that water is, that one is then claimed by God and placed into community, different, more extensive and expansive than a family, far more malleable and resilient than earthly configurations, right? The community of faith allows for all to enter, but more than entrance, it allows for all to have a vibrant and vital part and place in the structure, Sharing in the opportunities as well as the obligations, which, by the way, is important because, well, look at your announcement sheet, the giving for the month of June. That's the obligation part. 
The opportunity part is, oh, we can give. Isn't that nice? Sharing in that mission and ministry that's placed in front of all of us, sharing in the rights and the responsibilities that come with inclusion in this community. Now, I, I love my children, but raising children, as you well know, is hard work. Grandparenting, on the other hand, grandparenting is God's way of saying, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Here, have a grandchild. <laughs> because in all the ways that they are wonderful, and they are all wonderful, mine, yours, everybody's, nothing compares to the laughter of a baby. Now, I know you have lovely grandchildren and great-grandchildren, but we have been gifted with the world's happiest grandchild. <laughs> she also is nocturnal, doesn't sleep at night, but <laughs> has a singular and infectious joy that just bubbles out of that chubby little frame. And when you hear a baby laugh, think back to when you heard a baby laugh. That is transformational, right? You are moved from where you are to where you could be. I don't know what goes on in their tiny little brains, but I believe Matthew is right about this one. That God indeed has revealed something to infants, something that so enlivens and animates them that it just bubbles out right? and is shared with everybody around. Something enlivening and enlightening, something joyous and life affirming. Something which grumpy, cranky, smarty pants people like me need desperately to hear. You want a window into the heart? Of God, you want to know what the will of God is? Listen, listen to a young child laugh. It is grace in a diaper, <laughs> and it is good for your soul. Amen.
with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Confident that God receives our joys and our concerns, we offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and for all of creation. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word. Especially we pray for our bishops, Elizabeth and Kevin, as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all that you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and pray that your spirit of power and protection will surround and support them. Hear us, O God. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need. We continue to pray for those people who have requested our prayers. Father Ken Tom, Betty A, Jude D. Bill H, Lowell K, Paul K, John L, Pastor Joe, Dwayne S, Glenn S, Rachel S, Grace T. Make your presence known among all who suffer. Hear us, O God. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing. Watch over those who are absent this day. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for this nation. Our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria. Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster and all first responders. God in your mercy. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O oh God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those cares, concerns, and celebrations which you carry in your lives today. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray silently, aloud, and those prayers for which we have no words, we lift them all 
in the name of the one who reconciled creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As you are able, I invite you please to stand. Peace of the living Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation. Multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be with It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink. Saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return, return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup. Fill our hearts with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through Him, with Him, in Him, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. You may be seated. I would remind you that the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. We understand this communion table to be open. It is not the possession of this church. It is the table of our Lord, and it is made ready for those who love him and those who wish to love him more. So come, you who have great faith, and you who have little. You who have been here for a long time, and those of you who have arrived this day, those of you who have tried diligently to follow, and those of you who, like me, have failed, come because you do not earn a spot at this table. You are here by the invitation and the direction of Christ, and it is Christ who meets you here. After the choir communes, I would invite you to come forward at the direction of the ushers body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please stand. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest of seeds. Bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Lutheran Church, who are we? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace, share the harvest.